Hello Indie Game fans, we have a fantastic week of releases to close off April, with some returning favourites, ports of interest and wild new titles in this edition of Indie Gaming This Week. Let's begin with Metal Mind, a pixel art action roguelite starring Mecha that I think looks pretty good. I do love my pixel art, and the art here is on point, but this concept has certainly been done before in titles like Neural Voider, so I'm curious to see what's new. I believe I saw some gameplay footage of this a little while back, which looked a little sluggish to me, so I wonder if it was an issue with gameplay capture or if the actual speed is at that level. Also of interest is that it comes to us from a Chinese developer, so perhaps that will inject some fresh new ideas into the roguelite space. If you love Jurassic Park, of course, Prehistoric Kingdom will be of interest, so enjoy this narrated trailer. The time has finally arrived. A second chance for the magnificent creatures time passed by. A zoological world of opportunity in the palm of your hands. This is a place where the past meets the present, filled to the brim with animals your eyes wouldn't believe. We've resurrected an array of extinct species that are not only alive, but thriving. In time, you'll be building enclosures that are so astounding, the guests will feel like they've stepped into another world. We've already scouted a number of locations to continue construction, but where we build is up to you. Whether it's an attraction or an amenity, our assortment of modules will allow you to create functional and highly customizable guest facilities that speak to your inner architect. For the animals, remember you're building a sanctuary, their home. You'll need to feed them, care for them, and above all else, keep them safe. It's not an easy job or a clean one, but it's the least we can do to show the world that these aren't monsters. Show the world what they truly are, and they'll come running. These are nature's greatest creations. This is your park. This is Prehistoric Kingdom. An awesome third-person action-adventure title is The Serpent Rogue, one where you play as a plague doctor-looking character with the power of alchemy at their fingertips, having to harvest plants and craft potions in order to protect the realm. While the aforementioned crafting systems are critical, the combat looks pretty good as well, with a mixture of melee and ranged combat, as well as the ability to transform into powerful monsters. I do love the look of this, so if the gameplay loop is compelling enough, it could be something special. It is a nostalgic week if you've been playing indie games for a while, with Trigon Space Story of course paying tribute to FTL Faster Than Light. In many ways, it looks to be the same game but with fancier graphics, being a roguelite real-time spaceship simulator where you're commanding your crew members while the battle rages on.
stations like weapons, shields, and engines need to be manned, with hostile boarding enemies and fires to deal with as well, all while you're trying to destroy your opponent's ship. There does appear to be a meta progression system through the central hub of a space station, which was not in FTL, but otherwise, the galaxy exploration, random events, and choices to make does look similar. It's crazy to think that it has been 10 years since the launch of FTL, so hopefully Trigon will be able to capture some of that same magic while pushing the concepts forward and making it their own. We have decided to use an unusual ingredient in our specialties as a result of the insanely high meat prices. Due to sheer hunger, or simply because it tastes so delicious, human flesh is highly appreciated. We do not know the reason why, and we don't really care. Like Godlike Burger covered last week, the deliciously evil Ravenous Devils is another title that has you chopping up your customers to be used as ingredients in the food that you sell, being a very dark management sim that is pretty much Sweeney Todd the game, suddenly being of interest. Working so damn hard to do things right and earn as much money as we can. This is Arrakis, a world of sand and death, brimming with terrible dangers, only matched by the resources and secrets it holds. French developer Shiro Games has grown to quite a size that they're not dead in the anymore. When this particular case of Dune Spice Wars, it is even less indie due to the Dune license, but given that they made the excellent Northgard, this should turn out pretty well. Need to survive. Then try to understand the land. Rally local villages or force them into submission. Use them as outposts to develop your infrastructure. and set up the Vital Spice harvesting process. Then build a solid foothold to start your conquest. You will have to fight to defend what you have and take what you need. Or rely on your cunning to achieve your goals through the arts of subterfuge, politics, or diplomacy. Arrakis is mine. But no matter who you conquer, manipulate, or destroy, you will never truly control Do. I do have to give a very special mention to the House of the Dead remake as well, a remastered version of the 1997 arcade light gun rail shooter that is being brought to modern consoles, so check it out to get to know a piece of gaming history. zombies. The only answer is blood. Smaller games begin with the zombie action roguelite bit gun looking like a pretty decent entry. Bit gun. After a period of exclusivity on PlayStation and the Epic Game Store, Bug Snacks launches on Steam, Xbox, and Switch, also releasing the Owl of Big Snacks free update, so check it out if you have not. Did you all see that? 
giant bug snacks! Gosh, we might be witnessing a prehistoric species somehow preserved at the bottom of the ocean. We need to form an expedition. Ta-da! Uh, bro? Has anybody seen my hat? Snacks with hats? That's adorable! And that's not all, buddy. Ta-da! We finally finished your huts! So keep checking your mail, do some redecorating, and before you know it, this will feel like home. Can we stop wasting time and get on with this expedition before I'm as old as Shelda? Ready yourselves! A grave danger approaches! <laughs> City Wars Tokyo Rain is a neat-looking cyberpunk single-player collectible card game looking like it's for fans of the genre. Flat World is a Zelda-style RPG that comes to us from a fairly huge game development YouTube channel, making this early access title of interest. For something a little more grimdark, the action roguelite Guilt the Deathless looks awesome, but I'm curious about the shared world adventure part of the description, where your actions do affect the game world of other players. You're not like the others. You aren't a fiend, at least. May the winds of chance dictate whether we meet again. Might be a gamble though, for you. I mentioned the Chinese action roguelite Otherworld Legends recently when talking about upcoming games in the genre, but despite this being a mobile port, the developer has revamped everything from controls and balance to make it fully compatible, making it of interest.
Research and Destroy is an interesting entry since it is a turn-based action game where three scientists are working together to destroy supernatural hordes coming to us from a team in Japan, but curiously, is being published by Spike Chunsoft. Retail Royale is a first-person battle royale title set inside a furniture store like IKEA, where everything is a weapon, looking so weird but interesting. Sea of Craft is a sandbox builder where you're constructing various ships for naval warfare, where I do wonder how structured this game is, whether there are objectives or quests, or if it is purely freeform, but the range of parts and options look pretty good. Finally, we do have the Steam release of the awesome character action title Ultra Age from a Korean developer following releases on Switch and PS4 last year.
Let's kick off the top 5 with Peglin, a roguelite pachinko title that is certainly of interest, especially to me since I did play and loved Peggle back in the day. This game, however, adds a turn-based RPG combat element at the top of the screen, where our little goblin character is facing off against monsters, where I do always love RPG-like elements added to more conventional games like Solitaire, Pinball, or even Pachinko in this case. Remember when I said that we have returning favourites? The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is the enhanced re-release, being a must-play for everyone. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Stanley was happy. One day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite do. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that was led into the room. Stanley, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any. Stanley walked Stanley upstairs the to the next box. Stanley, Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. Stanley, Stanley took a look at the desk like the Stanley decides to go to the meeting. Stanley's obsession with Stanley is such a stunner. Stanley is sad to have lost his job. Stanley is Oh, come now. You don't want it to end already, do you? Why don't we begin again? Wait, you... how did you do that? Around the world, the giant monsters known as Kaiju are menaced. Monster attacks in the space worldwide. complex collapse on the new scientists are gathering years. here in Bombay. If you love tactics or strategy titles, I'm sure that Kaiju Wars will be of interest, one where you're planning your defenses against giant Kaiju as they seek to destroy your city. The Kaiju are powerful, but predictable. Of course, it does have Into the Breach vibes, but where you have multiple units at your disposal. It even adds a base building element and a setup phase where you can make repairs and build turrets, doing all of that so that you can stop the monsters. Open fire! These kaiju do also evolve, adding even more of a challenge, where it does have a story campaign, so there's no need to worry about roguelite elements if you don't like those. Yeah! It's not enough! I'm so very happy to share that Haiku, the robot, makes it to release, a gorgeous little metroidvania that I've had my eye on covering this before, during and after its Kickstarter campaign. You play as a little robot in a world full of corrupted ones, having to battle them as you explore the world. There are of course bits of Kunai and Hollow Knight in this, where it does seem to have quite an extensive map as well, so perhaps that means plenty of content. Thankfully, this will not be an early access release, so here's wishing the developer all the best.
And of course, the sequel to the most influential indie game in my life, Rogue Legacy 2, gets top billing, since this roguelite platformer makes it through early access and will be releasing in 1.0, alongside Xbox versions, where I'm pretty sure that ports to other platforms will come in time. This sequel is an excellent example of how to do a sequel right, taking elements from the first game and making them bigger and better, with more classes, traits and mechanics. If you're not familiar, the gimmick here is that you play as successive members of a family of heroes, where every child has unique traits that may help or hinder. I've been holding off playing this, only sampling a little bit during its early access launch, since I wanted the full experience, so with the 1.0 release imminent, now's the best time to jump in, taking the number one spot. For more roguelite titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.